Good morning to everybody. Uh, let me first of all uh, start this presentation by thanking the organizers of the European Congress of Radiology for inviting me as a speaker. It is a great honor for me. In this presentation, I will proceed to show the MRI findings in CNS tuberculosis according to our experience evaluating patients with this, with this disease in our daily practice together with the review of reported research uh, papers. By 2014, there were around 27,000 new TB cases reported in our country, and the incident was 88.8 .8 new cases per 100,000 inhabitants. The mean age was 35 years, basically between 21 and 48 years. The median age by gender was similar for both men and women. The highest per percentage of people affected by TB were unemployed, retired, preschooler, and students. 82% of TB cases reported in the years 2013 and 2014 affected lungs mainly. Almost 18 percent of cases reported were extrapulmonary tuberculosis, and of them, 9 percent had central nervous system involvement. The learning objectives of this presentation are characteristics of MRI findings of the CNS tuberculosis in Peruvian patients, accuracy of the MRI findings in CNS tuberculosis, and MRI uh, images of CNS tuberculosis simulating other pathologies. At first, the characteristics. This is a pathophysiology of CNS tuberculoma formation and tuberculous meningitis. TB is transmitted via close contact with an infected individual. Host projects droplets containing mycobacterium through coughing or sniffing. When inhaled, uh, mycobacterium infects the alveolar macrophages of the lung. Latent tuberculosis infection usually results with containment of mycobacterium within, within tuberculomas and no symptomatic illness, although 10% even, eventually develop active TB, usually predisposed patients. Imaging of TNS TB can be divided into different types of involvement as listed above. The intracranial TB and intraspinal TB. Within intracranial TB, there is meningeal TB uh, uh, with uh, tuberculous leptomeningitis, pachymeningeal TB. The complication of TB meningitis like hydrocephalus, tuberculous vasculitis, cranial nerve involvement. The sequel of, of uh, TB meningitis and parenchymal TB, like tuberculomas, tuberculous sepsis, tuberculous cerebritis, and tuberculous encephalopathy. Within intraspinal TB, there is a typical spinal TB, like spondylodesitis, that will be discussed by Dr. Jeremy Carpio in, the, in a later presentation. And a, and a typical spinal TB, the intramedullary TB, solitary virtual body involvement, pure posterior element TB, and tubercular arachnoiditis. What about pathogenesis of the tuberculous meningitis? Mycobacterium tuberculosis gets deposited in the brain parenchyma and meninges during hematogenous dissemination. Richard McCordock, around 84 years ago, postulated that tuberculomas or, or rich foci develop around the deposited mycobacteria. Much later, the rupture of, the, of this foci allows dissemination of mycobacteria into the subarachnoid space. Tuberculous focus leads the, to formation of a thick, gelatinous, inflammatory 
uh, today, and it affects basically basal cisterns and sylvian, sylvian fissures. The h 2 days in the basal cisterns can cause obstruction to CSF flow, causing hydro hydrocephalus and vasculitis and other complications. Tuberculous leptomeningitis. This is a 23 years year old male patient with a history of recent onset generalized convulsion, T2. T2 and flare images shows an area of vasogenic edema in the left superior temporal gyrus and the left front lobe. Post contrast T1 images show patchy gyral enhancement uh, associated with meningeal enhancement too. RCBV color map shows marked hyperperfusion in the lesion with no evidence of high uh, perfusion areas in the peripheral enhancing portions. This is a 51-year-old male with a positive IJV uh, diagnosis. The T2, T1 weighted um, flare images are showing an area of vasogen vasogenic edema in the left superior frontal gyrus. Post contrast, T1 uh, weighted images show patchy gyral enhancement uh, associated with meningeal enhancement. RCBV color map shows marked hyperperfusion in the lesion with no evidence of hyperfusion areas in the peripheral enhancing portions. Pachymeningeal TB can occur as either isolated dural involvement or with associated pile or parenchymal lesions. It is an important to diagnose, the, to diagnose pachymeningeal TB because it responds well to antitubercular treatment and should be considered in the differential diagnosis of pachymeningeal abnormalities. If there is a evidence of TB elsewhere in the body, it may further suggest the diagnosis. However, the appearance of the focal and diffuse pachymeningitis in, on MR imaging is non-specific and may be seen in a large number of inflammatory and non-inflammatory conditions. This is a 23-year-old uh, woman with headaches Atrial flare images show hyperintensity and thickening pachymeningeal. Post contrast, T1 atrial and coronal images show diffuse enhancement of the pachymeninges, suggesting pachymeningitis. TB was confirmed on CSF examination. Hydrocephalus can be communicating, non communicating, or complex in the patient with TB meningitis. Hydrocephalus is usually communicating. It occurs because of obstruction to CSF flow in the basal cisterns by inflammatory exudate. Complex hydrocephalus can be seen on TB with a combination of non-communicating and communicating hydrocephalus. This is a 24-year-old male HIV positive with headaches and signs of intracranial hypertension. Periventricular hyperintense hyper signal on coronal T2 and natural flare images indicating interstitial edema related to the increase of the intraventricular pressure. Post contrast, T1 weighted axial images show abnormal meningeal enhancement along the basal cistern encasing the circle of Willis and Tintarium. This is a 25-year-old woman with severe headaches and signs of intracranial hypertension. Here, we are showing the postoperative control of a ventricular peritoneal shunt. 
hyperintensity signal on the actual flare images and enhancement on 